oh gosh, I, I, I think it's time to film the online service. I'm sitting here on this wonderful bench given by uh, Rich and Sally Crow um, in, in honor of uh, Mary Lou and Wright Sr. and Dot and Bill Crow. So I'd like to thank them for this wonderful uh, bench. But I, I started slower because I, I was just too comfortable. So um, let's have the call to worship. Well, every time I, I read this passage, I feel like I've got to explain to members of the congregation that really, honest, Bob Dylan did not write this uh, in, in, the, in the song that even the birds sung, turn, turn, turn. This was really written uh, probably uh, 500 B.C. So uh, I read from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He writes, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Amen. May we bow in prayer. Let us pray. Our God, I would pray that in this online service that be something said or something prayed or the moment of virtual communion, there'd be something that could feed the soul of the good people who tuned in. And uh, please bless it and carry it with you with your spirit, we pray. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to start with uh, joys and, and concerns. Um, joys, well, uh, things seem to be opening up, in, at least here on the East Coast. But then I, I, I keep reading that the COVID-19 thing is really smacking other parts of the country. So I guess there's a joy and, and a concern, uh, concern with that. Um, we, we give thanks for the... Pete Mace up in up north, I think in Maine, is is recovering. We we give you thanks for that, um, and uh, we pray in terms of concern for Bob Dittimer, who is uh, fighting with uh, ALS, Bob Lou Gehrig's disease, and Ilsha Snateman, who has a terrible, rapid form of cancer, and who's a love. So we pray for both of those good people. In terms of concerns. Um, this will be shown on Sunday, a week from Saturday, or in other words, six days from now, uh, Ringwood is going to have, uh, depends what you want to call it, a unity Black Lives Matter service. Um, it's a memorial service. It's a, it's a protest. It's a demonstration. It's a service of harmony, we pray. Uh, we pray that it will bring people together, black and white and, uh, police and, and civilians, um, this is what we're praying, uh, uh, Indians, or I should say Native Americans, and, uh, and Caucasians, um, rich people, and for, we're just hoping that all people can come together with this and celebrate that we're one town, we're one people, one country, we're, you know, the, we're the human race. And so, um, you know, you, you can't say all lives matter. You don't dare say black lives matter. I'm just going to say human beings matter under the auspices of God. All of us matter. and uh, But this time, we are taking the side of, of our African-American brothers and sisters who, um, you know, there have been tremendous violence upon them over the past 300 years. Tremendous violence. And... Uh, we, we need it to stop. 
And so we pray for this. We come before you now in prayer. Hear our prayers, God. God, forgive me if I use the wrong language, Indians or Native Americans. Sometimes it's, it's hard to know what to say. So forgive me for using the wrong terminology. Um, forgive us all for not being sensitive enough to people who, who need some sensitivity. They deserve some sensitivity. And I'm referring right now specifically to our African-American brothers and sisters. They need our sensitivity right now. And we, and we all need things to change. I also pray for the police. Um, you know, I've had police tell me that they know their targets. Um, so I pray for them. Um, you know, everybody needs a prayer, and a different prayer is offered. I pray for the sick. I mentioned two people from our congregation. There may be more right now. I, I pray that this summer could be a time of beauty uh, for people. There's flowers all around. Help us to appreciate the beauty that exists. Lord, we come before you now in silent prayer. Hear our prayers. O oh God, lead us on, we pray, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's now time for our, our offering. Uh, one thing I'd like you to offer, I'd like you to promise virtually that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll wear your masks and, and your social distancing. I mean, there's a great fear right now. This thing's going to be a resurgence, a second round of it. And it will happen unless we are, you know, do what we're supposed to do. The reason I'm not doing doing this service is that um, Ellie Thomas is a good, I don't know, 10, 12 feet from me, we're, and we're outside. So otherwise, I'd wear this, all right? So, you know, you get your mask and keep social distancing. Uh, I have the basket. I always say every week, uh, I'd like you, if you're a member of the church, please send your uh, pledges and your money in. We, we still have salaries. We still have to keep the building open for for, if nothing else, there are other things, but the Center for Food Action, which is run out of our church. In fact, they're right here right now. This, I'm taping this on a Thursday. They're here right now distributing food to people in our community. And the number of people that uh, have been needing food has doubled or tripled. So, you know, they need the money. Um, so um, donate some money to Care of Our Church, Community Presbyterian Church, uh, 145 Carltondale Road, that's C-A-R-L-E-T-O-N-D-A-L-E -E Road, Ringwood, New Jersey, 07456. And if it's for Center for Food Action, and by the way, you've been very generous. People have been very generous with their contributions. But in the left-hand corner, put CFA or Center for Food Action, and we will get it there. Thank you, and fill this basket with, with your donations.
I'm going to read uh, from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Jesus is speaking. He says, Judge not that you not be judged. For the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Amen. May we bow in prayer. Dear God, I would pray that in some manner your Holy Spirit would take my words and, and transform them into a word of yours. And it becomes your word and ceases simply to be mine. I pray that that word, your word, might seek, find, and, and uh, adhere to the soul of this congregation where, <laughs> out there in, in computer land. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I, I think it's really bad, the, uh, the vitriol, the animosity uh, between the political parties in this country. And you can say, well, you shouldn't do politics. Well, I mean, it's every other congregation, every other conversation, somebody brings it up. And it's like people can't say enough bad things about their ideological opponent. Here's a... And they ascribe to them the worst possible mo uh, motives. Now, there are people with bad motives. Who doubts it? But I'm not talking about them right now. I'm talking about the people that, could, you, that just disagree with us, maybe entirely, but their motives, we don't know that. Their, their, their motives aren't necessarily bad. Here's what it comes down to. I have found that in today's political climate, did you know that nobody is mistaken? Did you know that? Nobody is mistaken. Oh, no. My ideological opponent isn't mistaken. Oh, no. Ready? He's lying. Now, now wait a minute. You know, uh, for us to accuse somebody of being a liar means we're able to get into their soul and their mind and understand they're, ta they're, they're saying a malicious untruth. When maybe, possibly, they're, they're just wrong, you know, just wrong. They, they are mistaken. Here is the declension I used to say, and, and I still mean it, though. Things have become more, uh, I don't know, more vitriolic than, than I've ever seen in, in my adult life. If, if I'm talking to somebody, let's say Zelmo here, I'm talking to Zelmo, and I find that Zelmo completely disagrees with me. I say, well, I say to myself, you know, Zelmo's, Z Z Zelmo's ignorant. If I give him a book, the right book, and he reads it, he'll agree with me. And you know why? Because all bright people would agree with Ben Fromman. So I, I give Zelmo the book, and he reads it. Amazing. But he disagrees. And I say, well, God, I mean, how can that be? Zelmo, he, he's educated. You know what? Zelmo's just stupid. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So I talk to him further, and I realize... You know, stupid people don't talk like Zomo. He's actually quite smart. How could it be that an educated, smart person would disagree with me? And you say to yourself, that's not possible. You say to yourself, all smart, educated people would agree with me. You say to yourself, the issue here is that Zomo has bad motivation. Because all bright, educated people would agree with me unless they are poorly motivated. So then I talk with Zomo more. And I find he's very well motivated. 
gives a lot to charity, he's decent with human beings, kind to children, doesn't kick his dog. You know, this is a nice guy. And so then when I say to myself, it's not possible. Well, the problem is, you know what the problem is, friends? It is possible. <laughs> in fact, this is the way the world operates. Um, uh, we all like to think we're, we're smart. We all like to think we're educated. We all like to think we're well-motivated. And, you know, many of us are. So are our ideological opponents. You know, uh, how can a person be so wrong? Well, you know, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean bad motivation. You know, since 1990, and I had that's a very crucial year for me, and I'm not going to get into it. That would be a longer sermon. But since 19, when I was 40 years old in 1990, since that year, I have changed a lot of my opinions. A lot of my opinions since the year 1990. And I will say uh, in the year uh, uh, 2010, I changed my political uh, uh, opinions. I thought I had good reason to. Um, but, you know, people change, and so Zelmo's going to change. Who's, you know, I loved my father. Anyone who knows me knows how much I love my father. My father was a great guy. My father was, you know, started off poor. Started out poor and uh, worked hard. He was smart, and he worked hard. Really not formally educated. And he went to high school, you know, but that, that's it. And I ended up you know, working in 66 countries of the world. I mean, this is really impressive, I think. And uh, he was a smart guy, too, but many is the time, many is the time, my good, smart father would tell me, and he would tell me this, I haven't changed, he would say with great pride, he would say, I haven't changed my mind in 40 years. He was proud of that. I try to tell him, Dad, I mean, that's really nothing to be proud of. Are you saying that in 40 years you've never read anything that even alters your, your opinions even a little bit? No. I, I, well, he was a great guy, but boy, you know, he could be stubborn. Unlike me, I'm never stubborn. Okay. But uh, he could be stubborn. You know what? Um, yeah, you, you, can, you can change your, your mind. You know what life is like and opinions are like? I'm talking about Zelmo here. You know what life is really like? People say life is like ready, aim, fire. You know what the truth is? No, it isn't. Life is like ready, fire, aim. Ready, fire, re-aim. Ready, fire, re-aim. And you know what the truth is? If we're thinking at all and we have you know, at least a somewhat open mind at all, willing to let literature and good arguments and people like Zelmo talk to us and, you know, alter our opinions a little bit. Uh, we're not thinking. No, it's, it's, it's ready, fire, aim, and then re-aim in, in order to, 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 to grow. So I'm asking you, don't, don't be judging the Zelmos of your life too hardly. They, they disagree with you. That's true. And they may not be liars, you know. This may be mistaken. Of course, it's not possible that we're mistaken. That's a joke. Could be, could be, could be. It's possible, you know. The truth could be somewhere in between Zomo's argumentation and my own. I tell you what, so I don't judge them harshly. John Wesley, who gets, is, gets wiser and wiser the more I read about him, he said this. He said, I have often repented of judging too harshly. And very seldom have I repented of being too merciful. Let me repeat that. It's a wonderful saying. John Wesley said this. He says, I have often repented of judging too harshly, judging Zelmo too harshly. But very seldom have I repented of being too merciful. You know what the truth is, friends? We're never going to get it perfectly right. Not me, not Zelmo not you. This huge thing of opinions, political and otherwise, we're never going to get it right. Therefore, all of us have to err on the side of mercy. You know, there's a, in this mountain, this extreme judgment and extreme mercy, 
on purpose be on this side of the mountain because you're never going to get it right. So you might as well make your mistake on mercy. Um, and um, if you do that, you, uh, like John Wesley, you, you, you won't have too many regrets. Sometimes you'll give away the farm, but that's all right. That's okay. Give away the farm some. Better give away the farm than put Zelmo in prison. Give him the farm. Love your brother in terms of judgment. Love him well. Let us pray. Our God, I would pray that in this season of political season that's going to get worse, November's coming up. As we talk to our, our friends and our acquaintances or people that used to be friends, or people that used to be acquaintances, um, help us to uh, not just be tolerant but understand that the opinions we're holding now will probably will be altered at some point in the next five to ten years. Probably will. Unless you're my good dad who says never. But you know what? I don't believe him. I think in 40 years he changed his mind a few times. So let us have some humor with other people in this world. Uh, and have humor with ourselves. We pray this and love us well, God. In the name of your son Jesus, who, who did love us well. Amen. I'm not going to go get the, the communion elements. The Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest, took bread and broke it and said, this is the, my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after the summer and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the resurrection of our Lord until he returns. I give you the body and the blood of Christ. Symbolically, amen. And may the good Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. I'd like to thank Ellie, who filmed it, Bob um, Kreutz, who's going to edit it for us. I think, I, I'm not sure, I think this week everybody's involved with the music. I think Neil is, I think Aaron is, and of course Jim Weber is. So I'd like to thank all those people who uh, took part in this service. But now, I'm going to go back to my bench um, and, and, and continue reading. Oh, God bless you guys. Um, amen. Oh,